In my house is a piece of Georgia folk art that I treasure. It's painted on a piece of discarded paneling cut with a jigsaw to fit the image. And it depicts a young boy wearing coveralls and a too big fedora. And he has the wings of an angel. Painted on one leg of his coveralls is this inscription. Elvis at three is an angel to me by Howard Fenster from God, man of visions. Pennville, Georgia is just a little outside Somerville in the northwestern part of our state, and that was where the Reverend Howard Finster lived, a character of the sort who could be found only in the rural South. I will never try to sell my Elvis at three. I bought it from Howard himself for 50 bucks about 40 years ago. I expect it's worth a good bit more than that now. And another thing I'll never forget, the times I visited Howard at what he called Paradise Garden. Paradise Garden is a one and a half acre wonderland of Howard's creations, not just paintings, but pathways and buildings and mosaics. I, I can't describe the place because Paradise Garden is too otherworldly for words. You should just head to Penville to see it for yourself. Paradise Garden Foundation has restored it beautifully. When I was at the University of Georgia, a band you've probably heard of called R.E.M. made the video for its debut single, Radio Free Europe, at Paradise Garden. As a result, when the band got famous, Howard's art did too. And when I made my first college pilgrimage to Penville, I got the same story about how Howard started making art that everyone else who visited him got. And here's the way I remember it. Howard told me and my friends that he used to make wooden toys for kids in the community, and he painted them with tractor enamel. And then he looked at us and he said, One day I dipped my finger in that paint, and a face come in that paint. And that face looked at me and said, Howard, paint sacred art. He got that calling straight from God, and boy, did he ever follow it. And his art now hangs in museums all over the world. He amazed me in my youth. Howard Finster showed me that the hellfire and brimstone preachers of my southern small town upbringing could influence the great world beyond. It had the power to draw fancy New York curators of art into a place that was so familiar to us, but so far unto them. Now, I look back and think that visiting the good Reverend Finster 40 years ago might have led me to my own calling trying to tell the stories of the astonishing South in all its weird and wonderful glory. I hope you'll come and read some of those stories at SalvationSouth.com.